What's up, savages? This episode goes out to Curse Chino, who asked, How do you become a savage? Well, Chino, I have one step for you that has to be done before we can get started today. Reach up that pretty little skirt and remove your testicles and then throw away the skirt because it looks terrible. Let's begin. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Gandhi's Thoughts, brought to you by Mind Nutrition. I am Gandhi, and today, and today, we are going to do two things. One, I'm going to give you my top four predictions uh, for COD Champs. I'm not going to go through all the pool plays and everything like that. I'm just going to go ahead and flat out give you my top four. With the randomized bracket, I think it's probably for the best to just kind of throw my top four out there and pray to God that the bracket falls that way. Will it? Who knows? I have no idea. I can't give you an accurate bracket prediction so you know what i'm just gonna do this also how did i record this video from this place if my flight this morning left at 6 45 <laughs> it's pretty fucking simple but i just wanted to do that i had to do that had to do it hold on one second <sighs> rockstar sugar-free man love it now before i do that i have one thing to say to chino chino and everyone out there who keeps asking, kind of like, how do you become this savage? You're like, what does it mean to be a savage? I've never given it much thought. Never have. Uh, this is probably the most thought I've given it. But when, you know, when you think of a savage, you think of those badass action heroes back in the day growing up that was just blood and guts. And when they moved, people got out of their way. And when they talked, everyone shut the fuck up and listened. And when they were in battle, they fought to the death, Right. That's like my kind of perception of a savage, right? Something that's kind of just gone in today's world. The other thing, and this is the main thing we're going to talk about today, and it's going to be kind of short, but it doesn't matter. The main thing about these people is they didn't give a shit what others think, right? That is rule number one. If I'm putting together a savage handbook, rule number one is stop giving a shit what others think. I, for the longest time of my life, probably, shit, Probably since I was from 13 all the way through 21, I used to give a shit about what other people think. I let them kind of control who I was, like I, not control who I was, but control what kind of personality comes out of me, control what I do on the weekends, all this bullshit. And I hated it. I hated everything about it. It wasn't me. And every time everyone knows this feeling. When you go out to a party or you go out to a bar and you become a product of your environment, your environment doesn't become a product of you, right? And that's mainly because of other people basically kind of not pressuring you into it, but kind of guiding you through it. And that's the part that I fucking hate it. I hated it my whole life, but you know what? You do it just so you can fit in. So no longer, really, it was up until, God, maybe, probably 2013, to be honest. In 2013, I decided, you know what? I'm tired of being this pebble like floating down the river. I want to fucking stick out. I want to be myself, and that's what I'm going to do. So as soon as this happened, as soon as I stopped giving a shit what everyone thought, and I just basically did me, everything got a lot better completely. You have to understand, right? And the main one of the main things they teach people about setting goals now is to keep your goals to yourself because people... When they hear about your goals, they're just going to fucking sabotage you. Like, how many times have you heard someone say, oh, yeah, I'm going to quit cigarettes? And then you hear someone go, no, you're not. Right away, as soon as you put doubt in someone's head, they're going to hold on to that and be like, yeah, you're right, man. I totally can't do this. Fuck that person. Fuck him right in the ass. You don't give a shit about him, and you shouldn't give a shit about him because he means nothing to you. Keep everything to yourself in regards to your goals don't tell anyone about it just do you at the end of the day you care about being comfortable in your own skin you have everything to prove to yourself you don't have anything to prove to the guy next to you that guy means nothing you think you care about the 12 year old kid who tweeted you and told you you suck ass no you don't care about that that's bullshit those people suck they mean nothing to you they are more insignificant to you than we as humans are insignificant to the entire universe right? Just wrap your mind around that, okay? Because you're never going to meet them, and even if you do, it doesn't matter. You have everything to prove to yourself. So the quicker you stop caring about what other people think, and you just do you, the happier you can be, and you're one step closer to becoming the savage, right? Because when your mind's unlocked, and you can sit back and say, you know what? I am happy. 
I can sleep so well at night. This guy tweeted me. I don't give a shit. Let me scroll through my mentions. In fact, I'm going to get rid of my freaking phone and just throw it in the back here because it doesn't mean shit, right? Just disconnect from caring about what other people think and just do you. And the people who like you will follow suit. That is rule number one. Now, anyways, now since that's out of the thing, let's talk about COD Champs. Now, COD Champs is this weekend. Technically, it's tomorrow, but it is this weekend. Everyone kind of knows it goes pool play into randomized seeds into then a double elimination bracket. Now, Seeing since it's a randomized bracket, I can't give you an accurate prediction, which really sucks, and I'm sorry about that. I really, truly am, but it is what it is. There's nothing I can do about that. I'm sorry. That day, when it becomes unrandomized, I will I will give accurate prediction. I'll try to get a webcam. Uh, actually, you know what? I'll bring Maven's camera, and I've recorded this on Wednesday, so this is my thoughts Wednesday before leaving on Thursday. I will bring Maven's laptop, and I'll bring this little camera, and we will record and upload it assuming there's an internet that day as soon as they randomize the seeds just for you guys because that's what we do here anyways so saying since it's randomized i've decided to just go ahead and pull out four teams that i believe have the ability of making top four despite despite any randomized seeds i'm gonna go ahead and go through it now the number one team on the list here i'm just gonna go ahead and say it complexity I think Complexity has the number one chance of winning COD. COD? Why did, why did I say that weird and stupid? Have, um, let's try this again, Scott, and let's try to pretend that you can form sentences. Now, Complexity has the number one chance of winning COD champs. Why? One, they're the most consistent team. Two, they went to the UGC land and they land before this event against various teams. Not just one, they land against various teams. So they were able to test and test and test their strategies to see if that actually worked out. They learned a lot as a team. We've also learned a lot of their weaknesses. Search and Destroy is not their best. They're still eh, on it. But you know what? There's a couple maps where they show up and they show up well on it. So as long as Complexity can show up and win one search... One search every series. I believe they have the ability of winning the entire thing. And now I know a lot of people are gonna be like, "Oh, well, what about the what about the respawns?" Well, they're the best team in respawn, in my personal opinion. Well, I well not technically based off of U.S. Finals. U.S. Finals, I think strictly business ended up doing better, but it doesn't matter. Complexity, in my opinion, as it stands right now, is better. So, complexity number one chance of winning COD champs. Number two, strictly business. Strictly Business is one of those teams who people kind of looked at and they were like, I don't understand like why how this team got like top four or top six or whatever it was at UMG Philly. They're like, I don't get it. Sensor's kind of like, you know, up his own ass, blah, blah. And to those people, I say, shut your mouth, right? I think Strictly Business, they're innovative. What they've done, they single-handedly changed cop at US Finals. They ran four subs a lot and just forced gun battles. They just kept forcing and forcing and forcing. They all ran steady aim, four subs, just crushing through their opposition, and it showed. That alone made them win U.S. Finals. They brought a completely different gameplay to the table, right? And that is what you're looking for to see in a team. Strictly business, if they win COD Champs, I will not be surprised, period, right? Sensor, are one of the best leaders in the game. But really, my full attention, full attention is on two players. Apathy, because he either fucking crushed and had some of the most ridiculous plays at the U.S. Finals, or he was just Mr. Consistent. If he can crush and always be able to harness that clutch factor, strictly business, I can see them winning very easily. But the main person I'm looking for is Saints. Saints, you little crazy serial killer, you. I have a lot of faith, and I believe that as long as you remain happy and things don't get out of your control, you can win this, buddy. You can do it. I believe in you. You're a fucking monster. You are a freaking monster. So, that's number two. Number three. I'm kidding. Uh, number three is going to be TK. 
Uh, Team Caliber, despite the fact that they finished, this has kind of been almost in order of the U.S. Finals, but Team Caliber is a team who also attended UGC land. They were able to test their strategies against four different teams, and they went online, and they wanted to blow their brains out because, hey, that's what happens. Now, TK secured their spot in PAX as well as the fact that they ended up beating Complexity on day four. Yeah, day four of the UGC land in the tournament. Now, when Complexity would win the respawns, they would win by a lot. But when TK won respawns, they won by a little bit, but they won the search. They won the searches. And that is the difference maker in professional Call of Duty. Ask any pro COD player what separates an amateur team from a pro team. And they will always say, search and destroy. Right? Well, that same thing sticks here in this world with pro teams as well. As long if you're a good search team and you just win one respawn, that's all that matters. You can take it to game five and you can hold on to your dicks and pray to God that you guys don't choke. That's what. That's how it is. Great. TK, they, they have a lot of big factors on their team. Formal is either... Johnny fucking Crusher or he's, you know, he just kind of gets shut down. And that's partly because of the other teams knowing exactly how he plays. We saw it at the U.S. Finals. Complexity just basically completely took him out of the game. Done. Now, I personally believe as long as things go according to plan and TK can come up big, I'm looking at two people. Goonjar. Goonjar has a lot of pressure on him as to when to put away the fucking AR and push up with his team. And two, to just slide. He needs to slay. That's his job. Him and Form will have to be big right there. Sharp also. Sharp was a little bit shaky at the land, but towards the end, he really started getting into a rhythm, and that's what made him better. So Sharp theory always consistent. I believe TK, as long as Goonjar can do well and Formal doesn't get completely countered by the other team, they're going to be good to go. The last team that I personally believe that could win, COD Champs. Um... You know, a lot of people are going to think, you know, Optic Gaming or, you know, I'm going Boys in Blue. I truly believe that the Boys in Blue have a great shot, a great shot at winning this event. I mean, the, the land that they have right now is perfect for them. They're playing against TCM. They're landing at the Envy House. They're playing 20 to 25 games a day. They're very consistent going into this. And if you kind of look at Envy as a whole, I mean, Envy's always been that team who gets close to winning and then just falls a little bit short, right? Well, Envy now, I mean, look at it. They were the only team, well, not the only team, they almost beat SB at the previous event with the same exact roster, Right? And obviously, when you lose a winner's semifinal, it is very tough to play against a team who is fired up coming through the loser's bracket, but the good teams will always shut that team down. Regardless, you know, FaZe beat them fair and square. FaZe is definitely a strong team, but I think just with the meta alone, that's what's happened. I think FaZe can't beat Envy. I personally believe that Envy has a great chance, and I'm looking at two people on this team. Two people that make the world of difference between whether or not this team wins this event or gets, you know, top four, top eight, doesn't matter. There's two people. Number one, study. Study. You are supposed to be the main slayer for this team, right? Everyone knows this. It's not It's not like I'm the only one who knows this. You're supposed to be the main slayer for this team. If you're hot and you show up to in every game, your team wins. Your team wins, period. You're a fucking monster, but you're an inconsistent monster. So you're like a normal person by day and by night you're a monster. You need to unlock it all. If you come in and you have a big event, you guys 100% are a contender. Hands down. Now the second person, it's not Nameless. Nameless is Johnny Consistent. It's definitely not Merc. Merc is, Merc is like furniture. He's just kind of there, but you know he's always doing his job. That's like the best analogy in the world for Merc. It's Rambo. Rambo, if Rambo gets antsy, starts second-guessing his decision-making, or just loses big gun battles, which, you know, Rambo, he he's not known for having the best shot in the game. Everyone knows that. He's known for being smart. Rambo has to win a couple big gun battles, and this team will look good. 
So my top four contenders for God Champs, Envy, Complexity, TK, last but certainly not least, complex or no, <laughs> Strictly Business. <laughs> Uh, other than that, I believe that Epsilon and TCM both stand an amazing chance at breaking into the top four. Keep in mind, this all depends on the randomized bracket. Other than that, I love you, but I don't love you. Make sure, guys, Team Savage this weekend. Show your fucking support. Love you.